So in general, histamine is a neurotransmitter made from histidine. It's designed to help with the inflammatory response. It's designed to vasodilate, open up the blood flat, uh, the blood vessels so you have better blood flow, which helps with an inflammatory response. So you bump your elbow, right? You bump your head. There's a histamine response that helps vasodilate, helps migrate a lot of those white blood cells into that area, kind of helps promote healing. The problem is acute acutely in an acute situation, not that big of a deal because it happens and then your body recovers. We're more talking about a chronic kind of low grade inflammation or low grade histamine issue where you're chronically swollen, you're chronically inflamed. You may have a lot of chronic histamine symptoms. This could be headaches. It could be flushing, right? That chronic red and flushing symptoms. It could be nausea. It could be hives, right? Those kind of wheels or uticaria hives on the skin could be fatigue, it could be brain fog, it could be just kind of chronic low grade swelling, it could be allergic shiners under the eyes with a lot of um, lymphatic pooling in the face. So it's good to keep an eye on these symptoms as they could be part of what's going on. And then of course, there's a lot of medication that are typically treating these things, whether it's Zyrtec or Allegra, Allegra or Pepsid-AC, different medications. The problem with a lot of the medications, they tend to have more side effects, whether it's fatigue or brain fog, and a lot of people, they just get knocked out when they take a lot of these medications. So they're kind of stuck because their performance and ability to function at work, if they're doing hard work or dealing with their kids, they're going to be pretty much a zombie or zonked out for a lot of them. So we want to really get to the root cause of why these symptoms are present. And a lot of times the gut's going to be a big role because a lot of chronic inflammation is going to be at the gut level, whether it's inflammation from food that you're dealing with, whether it's gluten or dairy and or other histamine foods, right? Fermented foods or aged meats or citrus or avocados, or it could be from a deeper infection that sets you up to be more sensitive, right? If we have SIBO or bacterial overgrowth or other infections, it's gonna potentially make it harder for you to digest food. The harder it is for you to digest food, the greater chance that you're gonna develop food allergens. And also the more inflammation in your gut, the greater chance that you're going to have gut permeability. So the more permeable your gut is, the more these foods have a way of getting into the bloodstream, the more your immune system sees them in an undigested state, increases the chance that we're going to make antibodies for those foods. And then also just the fact that we have other bacteria that may be slipping into the bloodstream. Uh, these compounds are lipopolysaccharides. These can also go and create histamine issues. They can also go to the up to the brain, hit and hit a lot of brain fog and mood issues. So there's a lot of like dominoes that get hit. Histamine may be one of those dominoes, but there's a lot of dominoes that get may hit. And then you have a lot of symptoms happening from it. And then the question is you have to kind of corral all these symptoms in to a root cause of like, what's the next step? Because it gets very, really overwhelming. Yeah, I want to go back to the symptoms real quick. Something that's really interesting is the fact that you could have issues with your sleep, you know, trouble falling asleep or even uh, dizziness. You know, I noticed when I went low histamine with my diet, some of this kind of disequilibrium dizziness stuff that I was having that I thought was mold exposure or possibly co-infections like Bartonella, I noticed when I went lower histamine, it got better. Like my head got more clear and then I was able to go to sleep better. So this is kind of why you mentioned some people do the antihistamines and then they get knocked out. You know, I think part of the reason that some people's nervous mm -hmm. systems are so revved up is excess histamine, but here they are taking melatonin. Now, that may help or passion flower, or, you know, we like to use like uh, motherwort or valerian or theanine Correct. or skullcap. There's a ton of good sleep options, but you may be missing the boat. So those herbs are fine. Those are much safer than a sleep drug, which are extremely hard to get people off of. But the, the, the sleep herbs may not be the root cause. It may be histamine. So you could try going with a lower histamine diet during the meantime. That's something we may recommend you do is go lower histamine while we're working on labs or waiting on labs. And then if we find that just by lowering histamine in the diet, all of a sudden you have less blood pressure problems, you fall asleep easier, you're not flushing, you're not having the nasal congestion, you've got rid of headaches, maybe your energy's better. Well, then that's a great clue that we're onto something, but we don't want to get you stuck on low histamine forever. I just don't think that's a way to live. So that's when we're going to go into these gut infections. So you mentioned bacterial overgrowth and how we're going to be looking at that is with stool and urine. So uh, Justin and I run, I don't know, pro between us both, probably thousands of labs per year. And I would say, now granted, we're a little bit biased, right? Because people that come to us have already been to many practitioners. And so they often are going to have real problems. But I would say 
90% of people we look at are going to have some sort of a bacterial overgrowth problem that's leading to these issues. 100%. So histamine, it's an important first step to look at.